In this lecture, we will study about permeability. In my previous lecture about osmosis, you have heard about the term semi-permeable membrane which allows solvent molecules to move from their higher concentration towards lower concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane that is it allows only solvent molecules to move across but not the solute molecules. So what is the permeability? The ability of a membrane to allow certain solute or particles across it and restrict some others to not. So depending upon the allowance which it permits to the solute and solvents the permeability can be of following types like impermeable membrane, permeable membrane, semi-permeable membrane and differentially permeable membrane, impermeable membrane as the diagram shows. Both the solute and solvent bond bounds off of the membrane. The membrane doesn't allow any of the solute or solvent particles to move across it. So it is a impermeable membrane. Now permeable as you can see in the picture permeable it allows both the solutes larger in size and solvent also move across the membrane. So this type of membrane is permeable membrane. Now the semi permeable membrane the membrane that allows only solvent to move across it but it restricts solute to pass through this is known as semi permeable membrane and next comes the differentially permeable membrane differentially permeable membrane that it allows solvents to move across the membrane but it does not allows all of the solute molecules to move across the membrane. Some of the molecules pass easily across the membrane which are smaller in size but the larger ones are not allowed to pass through. So this type of membrane is differentially permeable membrane. Differentially permeable membranes which allows some substances to pass through more readily than others and so it is also known as selectively or differentially permeable membrane. The examples of the differentially permeable membranes are all the living biological membranes and the examples of the semi permeable membrane is cellophane and the collodion. These are semi-permeable membranes. Now, this, what are the different theories for the membrane permeability? Some of the theories as mentioned above are retention pressure theory, ultrafiltration theory, electrocapillary theory, next is fat or lip lipid solubility theory, collodion theory and last one is the carrier theory. According to the retention pressure theory, this theory, retention pressure theory was proposed by Traub and according to this theory, some substances which have close affinities with the cell membrane are allowed to are allowed to pass through the membrane while others are retained by it that is this theory shows that certain substances which are having close affinity with the cell membrane are allowed to pass through while the others which don't have the affinity with the membrane are retained by it. Next is the ultrafiltration theory. This theory was proposed by 
Roland and Hoffman, according to this theory, cell membrane possesses minute pores, that is, ultra sieves, which permit the movement of molecules of relative size through it. As you know, filter paper. Filter paper allows only certain smaller solute particles to pass through it. Similarly, the ultrafiltration theory shows that cell membrane possesses small, minute pores like sieves which permit the movement of relative size of molecules through it. Next comes the electrocapillary theory. This theory states that a cell membrane possesses transmembrane channels, pores like structures with electrostatic charges. The permeability of a substance depends upon the pore size, the electric charges of the membrane and charges on the diffusing particles. Solutes move toward the solution that has the opposite charge. The neutral membranes allow free movement of cations as well as anions. Cation conductive channels have an average diameter of about 5 to 8 nanometer and are negatively charged. So, electrocapillary theory states that a membrane allows movement with the electrostatic charges that is the electric charges of the membrane and the charges on the diffusing particles neutral membrane allow free movement of both cations and anions next comes the fat or lipid solubility theory this theory was proposed by overton and according to this theory, lipid soluble substances like steroid hormones pass through the lipid bilayer. The greater the lipid solubility of a molecule, the greater it is permeability. Colloidal theory. According to this theory, the cell membranes and the protoplasm are regarded to exist in colloidal state and the penetration of solute particles is brought about by the basis of phase inversion process that is totally dependent upon the colloidal nature of the solutes. Now carrier theory. This theory explains the involvement of some carrier proteins in the permeability of the membrane. The proteins that are present on the cell membrane form channels for the movement of ions and small molecules and serve as carriers for larger molecules. So the carrier theory is the most accepted theory for the permeability of the membrane. Now what are the factors that affect permeability? Permeability depends on the constituents of the membrane, the degree of hydration, the porosity and the thickness of the membrane. Permeability of the cell membrane is increased if high doses of ionizing radiations, heat and pH change are applied to it. Permeability of membrane depends upon the composition of external solution. For example, absence of calcium in the external solution increases the leakage of ionic constituents from root cells. Next comes the most external factors such as high temperature, low partial pressure of oxygen, CO2, presence of toxic substances, materials such as acetone, ether, benzene, chloroform. In the external solution, these all chemicals and toxic substances enhance the permeability. 
the permeability also depends on the age of the cell for example it increases at the time of senescence as the cells approach death it is greatly enhanced that is permeability increases with the age of the cells now uh, carrier theory explaining diagram how the protein channels allows solute molecules to pass across it so the carrier theory is the most explanatory theory for the permeability of a membrane the structure of the membrane this is phospholipid bilayer phospholipid molecule surface proteins and integral proteins that is globular proteins and the how the carbohydrate is entering with the help of these channels this all shows that carrier theory is the most accepted theory for explaining the permeability of membrane now a quick summary of the different types of membranes that is permeable semi permeable impermeable and selectively permeable permeable membranes that allow both solute and solvent to move across it for example filter paper cellulosic cell wall next is semi permeable these membranes allow diffusion of only solvent molecule for example phospholipid bilayer cellophane and the copper ferrocyanide membrane now the impermeable one these membranes do not allow diffusion of both solute or solvent for example cutaneous or tuberized cell wall now the selectively permeable membrane or what we call it differentially permeable membrane these membranes allow a specific solute molecules along with solvent molecules to move or pass through them that's all about the permeability of membrane